fact of it in our mind and in our hearts. By reading the book of Revelation, you see what God is going to do. And that is what we learned last week in the first uh, purpose of Revelation. A revelation to show to his servants the things that must soon take place. That's the purpose of the book. So there's something that God is doing doing and is going to do according to his calendar and by learning about it it will strengthen our faith it will give us a directions and as we start 2014 why not uh, align our lives our goals our ambitions with what God is already pointing to us he's giving us a glimpse of the glory to come he's showing us the way is showing us the things that are going to happen so that it will impact our life and we will go in that direction. Amen? So that's why I want to, to do this and I believe it will be a blessing for all of us. The book of Revelation has been a source of encouragement to suffering believers for all generations. Because when you see the Lamb of God opening the seals one by one and you see the, how he, he is in control of the events to come and that is justice will come to pass and everyone that have been uh, that have been um, uh, given their life for Christ will receive a reward and you see the control that God has over all the details and we saw it last week each seal that was open you know the four horses of uh, revelations and the riders you know and everything that comes and each time a seal is open the voice of the angels call out a, a, a rider with specific instruction and you it shows us that god has a plan God is working, God has control, and God gives permission and has a timing for each event that is going to unfold into the book of Revelation. So this is a great, great place to, to be also uh, comforted because, you know, many of us, I think we have asked this question about the justice of God. There's so much injustice in this world, you know, things that are unfair and complicated and, you know, it's not cool, you know, and why is this, why is that, and wh why does God allow this? And we saw that question asked in the presence of God last week when we were uh, studying the text. Uh, the, the question is asked, how long, Lord, before you will avenge us, how long? And we read that God said, uh, take it easy, wait a little bit longer. The number of those that will have to suffer and give their life for Christ has not yet reached is, is the complete number. So, so, so there are questions in this book that people have been asking in all generations and there are answers also from God for all of us. And when you read the book of Revelation, you cannot but develop a global outlook. Because you see in this book the completions of the plan of God and you see that Jesus Christ came, the Lamb of God, to redeem people from all tribes, all nations, all people, all races, all tongues and nations. So this is a global vision that God has so that when you read the book of Revelation it enlarge. Because so many times we get you know, so focused on our day-to-day -day activities, on me, myself, I, my conditions, my work, my wallet, my investment, and uh, my this, my problem, and all of this. And, and sometimes we, it, it's normal. We are human beings, and we have to, to take care of all of these uh, uh, personal matters. It, it is normal. But besides that, beyond that, God has a global plan. And his church, we have to understand that. And we have to agree and to, to focus and to run into the directions of God's global plan. And that's why we love mission. That's why we always want to evangelize. That's why we must never stop to reach out and tell others about the wonderful message of Christ. I would like an uh, amen for that. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. So this morning I want to talk about the relationship between God and the people of all nations. And uh, we will continue in Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. We come to the seventh seal, and there was a silence in heaven. What did I say? 
Okay, that must be my Sunday morning brain uh, problem. Revelation chapter 8. Yes, we are in Revelation. Verse 1 and 2. Okay. The Lamb opened the seventh seal, and there was a silence in heaven. You know, when you read the book of uh, Revelation, there are many uh, solemn moments that you will face, like that to, to a stop, a hush, a, a noise, a, a glory reveal, uh, a scene that will uh, depict God's glory and all the living beings that are sometimes sound so weird, things that we have never seen or cannot imagine. They are around the throne of God and lightning, thunders, a voice, a trumpet and all of this. And there are some special moments that I want to urge you that when you read, stop in this moment. Just don't read it. You know, when you read the book of Revelation, we are often like uh, excited about uh, uh, all the trumpets and the balls and the, the earthquakes and, uh, you know, like uh, all these events because they are spectacular uh, disasters and all of this and they, they just fill our minds. But besides all of these uh, disasters, they are glimpses into the glory of God. There are moments that you can see how people worship. And this is a, a preparation for us and also a way to examine like, is my worship that deep? Do I revere God that much? Am I having a, a heart of, of fearing the Lord, of great respect? Am I in, does the word of God really impact me or am I just like going lightly about all of the things? So there are some special moments and here is one of them. A silence for half an hour. You get the point? It's only a few seconds that we stopped. And it looks so long, isn't it? Half an hour, a hush. And what was heard? The angels stopped their worship and the prayers of the saints mixed with incense came up before the Lord. Next week, we are going to begin a week of prayer and fasting. And I, while I was reading this text, I really got something out of it. Because I see the smoke of the incense mixed with the prayers of the God's holy people ascended to God from the altar. And <coughs> note that nothing happens at the opening of the seventh seal until the prayers of the saint came before the Lord. To me, that's something significant. God is going to do something like uh, never seen in his story. He's going to come to the end of all things and he's going to judge with tremendous uh, judgments. But before these will come, he is waiting for the prayers of the saints to agree with his prayers. And probably the interpretation are, is that these saints were the ones that had been slain, that were under the altar in chapter 6, and they had been slain for the word of the Lord and everything. And they are, were crying out, when are you going to avenge us? When are you going to, to pay back people who have persecuted us and put us to death? Like, and I, I believe these are the, the prayers and the timing of God. So there's something about the prayers of the saints and the will of God and the timing 
the timing. You know, like when you say, when we pray according to the will of God, when we say, we pray your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I think that's, that's a moment like this that is just happening. A connection, a divine connection, praying exactly what the Lord wants at the right time. And God receives it. And look what he's doing after that. He sets in motion the coming event that will change history forever. It's powerful. And when the prayers of the saints, look at that, meet with God's fire. Wow. There's something here again. There's the prayers and there's the fire of God. It comes together and it returns to the earth. God is returning the effect of that prayer to the earth. It is more powerful than the power of darkness. It is more powerful than the demons. It is more powerful than anything that men can do to contradict and to oppose uh, the, the plan of God. It cannot. Nothing is more powerful than the prayer of the saints when it meets God's fire and it is returned into this world. I think to me it's like a, 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 th th this is what I will base my prayer and fasting week upon. I want this moment into my personal life. Prayer and fire. Then the angel filled the incense burner with fire from the altar and threw it down upon the earth. As God's people pray with is God's will on earth as in heaven, in the timing of God, their prayers are touched by the fire from the altar and heaven and thrown back down to earth. And when the prayers of God's people come back to earth, they bring the outpouring of judgment, noise, thunderings, lightnings, and earthquake, and all of this. And that shows us that judgment and revenge is in God's hand. It is in God's timing. And, and they, they appear to be an act of divine justice and then serve to the plea of the saints of God. And let us be impacted by this moment, this great silence, when this connection between the saints and God is taking place in heaven to prepare for our week and the new year as we will pray and seek the Lord in prayer and fasting. The trumpet judgments are released when that the seven seals are open. The trumpets begin. Revelation 8, 6 to 12. I want to show the table at this moment. Oh, okay, let's show the picture first. Sorry, changing my mind. Yeah, okay. What is going to happen? I will read it. Look at the picture. The seven angels, the seven trumpets. First trumpet, hell and fire mixed with blood. Thrown on the earth, a third of the earth set on fire, a third of the trees and the grass was burned. Second, a great mountain of fire thrown into the sea, third of the water in the sea came, uh, became like blood. One third of all living in the sea died. The ships, a third of the ships were destroyed. So something great happened. A great star, the third, Great star fell from the sky, or something like a great star fell. Or a, a great star fell from the sky, and we will comment on that in a moment. Burning like a torch, it fell on the third of the rivers, the 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 fresh water supplies of the world, the rivers and the springs of waters, and the name was uh, bitterness or worm, uh, wood worm, wormwood. <laughs> okay, <laughs> one third of the water turned bitter. And this bitterness was also poisonous because many people died from drinking it. The fourth trumpet, a third of the sun was struck and a third of the moon and one third of the stars became dark. So the day and the night was changed from that event. Let's go to the table and you will see a comparison here between the trumpets and the balls on the right and the trumpets and the, 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 the judgment aim at the same, same things. Uh, first, uh, the, the first one, uh, the vegetation, the earth. Everything is burned. A third of it is being burned. Then the sea becomes like blood. Then after that, 
uh, the fresh water supplies, like something like a mountain and a great star. And the soon moon, moon and stars are being uh, also affected, the heavens, the day is not the same. I traveled before to Yukon near Alaska with Bridget when before we were Christian. And there, during the night in July, uh, the sun never, never stopped shining. Like, it went below the horizon, but the light of it never went dark. And then winter, it's the opposite. So if you ever uh, traveled in the North Pole or the South Pole, you will have seen that. In winter, you will see darkness. You know, all the time. It will never really get you know, bright and all this, and the, the, day, the, the light of day will be very short if there is any light. And then summertime is the opposite way around. But this is, you know, something, something of, of that nature. Then after the, uh, the, this one, there are two more uh, trumpets. The text will tell us the first terror went by, okay? And they were like, the, an eagle went across the sky and the eagle cried, whoa, 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 or terror, 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 because more terrors are going to come. And why does he say that? Because the next one, as you can see on the table, uh, are affecting mankind. They are really affecting uh, mankind. Well, the first one is like a, a star. But in fact, when you read the text, I'm going a little bit fast because of time, but when you can read it for yourself, the, the, the star is in fact a person. When, when, you, when you read this, this text, the star is not only a, a star, it's, it's a person because it is given a, a key. It is given a, a, a key, uh, it is given authority. Um, it opens the bottomless pit. And the bottomless pit is where demonic beings had been imprisoned. It's hard to interpret this thing. That's why I was telling you when I go through a, a, re a series on Revelation, I'm not trying to interpret because we can, you know, say anything about anything. You can hear all sorts of interpretation. But the most possible interpretation is like a visual representation of the multitudes of demons that will be loosened upon the, upon the earth. You know, these locusts that come out, uh, if you look at their descriptions, they were allowed in verse 5, chapter 9, verse 5, they were allowed to make them suffer for five months, but not to kill. They are not to kill. The, the, the sting like scorpions, so, so they, we, we don't really, and it leads that people wish to die. They want to commit suicide. The, the conditions at that time is so horrible that they want to die, but death escape. It, they cannot, they cannot choose that. They cannot, it's taken away from, from, that, from that. So, and the, the, their purpose and the period is expressly governed by God. And everything that you will see in that, everything is ordained by God, everything has a purpose, everything has a, has a time, it comes at the right time, it's given a time and everything. So here it says, the purpose and the period is expressly governed by God. They were not given authority to kill. So they, they were restricted. But they are given authority to torment for five months. So, so that is, you know, you see the hand of God is res giving a restriction upon what is happening. And then the verse 12 says, the first terror is past, but look, two more terrors are coming. And then the sixth angel comes and blows the trumpet and releases four mighty angels uh, who were born at the great Euphrates River and look again, you will see the same truth applied. The four angels execute God's will in God's timing. They had been kept prepared for the hour, the day, the month, and the year. Their timing was there. They existed, but they were kept until that moment. And they have a specific sphere of activity. They were released to kill a third of mankind. So you can imagine. You remember the tsunami in uh, Sri Lanka, 200,000 people? 
now you're talking about two billion people, one third of the, the world. Before, when it, we read it uh, in the earlier part where it says that the, a third of the oceans, it probably has to do with um, a more uh, geographical area. It doesn't mean that all the oceans of the world would be affected but the area. Like for instance, the the tsunami in Japan that affected the nu nuclear plant over there is having an effect on this ocean at that particular place, on the agriculture of that place and everything. So there would be uh, local or geographical uh, plagues that will take place in the time of the tribulation as well. But this one here, one says the first terror is passed, two more terrors are coming. This is, this is really big because it's a third of all mankind that will perish. We cannot imagine what it will be. Uh, and then it, this is true, uh, uh, an army of uh, riders, uh, horse riders, like uh, um, the horsemen. This is 200 million people. And there are a lot of interpretation about this, what it can be like. Uh, some of this says it's China, some says it's the Arabic countries, some says it's Russia combined with others, or whatever it is, we don't know. But they have a mission to kill on a massive scale. Actually, the Bible used uh, two Ten thousands of ten thousands. That's the original uh, language. And if you look at the look given to these uh, uh, horsemen, you look at these very unusual military costumes because their breastplate is red, yassine blue, and sulfur yellow. Okay, who wants to dress like this and go out on the street? If you want to be, you know, a fashion, you red and blue and, and yellow. It's really flashy uh, for horsemen going on another. On on and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. So very weird descriptions, but it is a picture of horror, destructions, and demonic association. And then I want to, to uh, finish with the, the last part of the chapter, Revelation chapter 9, verse 20 and 21. But the people who did not die in these plagues, they still refuse to repent of their evil deeds and to turn to God. And this is the history of mankind since the fall of man. Genesis chapter 3 this is what happened, and it continues until the, almost the last chapter, the last few chapters of the Bible. You know, the Bible is called the History of Redemption. It's a book of redemption. But this is a book of redemption for you. You have received it. You've been redeemed. You, you're happy. You, you, you can rejoice for this great salvation, the grace of God. The offer of salvation came to you. You heard the gospel. You received it. You believed it. You retained it. And you enjoy salvation for eternity. Praise God for that. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. But there are a lot of people who are the enemies of God. They always have something to uh, go against God and see against God and to try to prove that there is no God and, and God is not this and God is not that and it will always happen. So you see that, that after so many months, after so many plagues, and the purpose of these plagues is always to give a chance. There's always uh, a, a break in between. And I want, I want to, uh, some, uh, a part that I, I skipped, but I want to, to tell you something about that. I want to do an observation on the four trumpets before I continue on the, on the, on the conclusion. The four trumpets, the, the f we go back a little bit, it reveal the severity of God's judgment. It, it targets the ordinary means of subsistence, food, water, and the ordinary means of comfort. Uh, the light of day and night and all of this and the obscurity of the sun and the moon and the stars and all this. Man, we always take for granted that the created orders of things that we use every day, that we don't think about it. You're hungry, what do you do? You go to the market. You, you know there will be food at the market. You, you, you turn the water tap. 
you press the electricity button, you turn the stove on, uh, you go to sleep at night, you know that your alarm clock will wake you up tomorrow morning and you will continue on and the cycle of your life will continue. Monday morning you go to work, Friday or Saturday you take a break, Sunday you go to church and Monday you go back to work. Life, life goes on, okay, like this. And we take for granted that this is going to be perpetual. Is it going to be perpetual? Agriculture, fishing, water, the day cycle, day and night cycles. During the great tribulation, God proclaims his lordship and he will disrupt all of these things. Because God is above. He's giving us all of these things for, for our well-being, for our covenant. It's the grace of God. It's the provision of our creator. He created the world with everything to sustain us. But then will come a time when the sinfulness will reach a peak and the timing in the calendar of God will come to the place of what uh, the events will unfold of what we read in the book of Revelation. Normally after an earthquake you see people's humility. Huh? People help each other uh, and then we realize that uh, nature is not as reliable as we, we had thought. Bridget and I were in Cebu when the earthquake came at 7.2 and we were awakened that morning. And it, 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 creates, it creates fear and, and insecurity when can, things like that happen or when you are in a plane and you have to land in a typhoon. Then you realize that you know, nothing is really s secure in this world. But in the book of Revelation it will be multiplied. The first four trumpets also reveal the mercy of God's judgment. Why? Because until now, it's been a third. It's been a partial judgment. Why not finish it all? It's the end. God is angry. The nations are angry about God. God is ang returned his anger against the angry nations. That's what we read in the book of Revelation. We read it in a few instances. They, they, they curse God. And they are angry. The nations are angry in God. That is in chapter uh, 11. You will read that. You will see that. Uh, and God could say, okay, that's enough. That's enough. I've been good to you for, you know, all, uh, forever. So now uh, my, it's time for my anger. But God here shows his mercy. He gives a third. A third of the plants. A third of the oceans, a third of the fresh water is partial judgment. It's not complete judgment. And they are meant to warn and to lead the rebellious world to repentance before the end. So that's something that we need to understand. Because when we read that, it says, God is so awful. No, God is not so awful. He saves. He saves the world. He sent Jesus. He was patient with his people of Israel. He sent his prophets over and over and over again. He sent his son into this world. He became a man. That's Christmas. And the, 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 the crucifixion of Jesus, they did not recognize it, what Pastor Jennifer was preaching to us. They did not accept him. They, did not re they rejected him. So come a time in the calendar of God with this event will unfold. And God is just. And God is holy. And God is going to reveal. You know, in our generation, we have been too much poisoned with the, 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 the tolerance things and all this and the weakness of God and the, 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 the love and all of this. And, you know, when people present God, they only dare to talk about His love. They don't dare to talk about His majesty, His holiness, His anger, His right, His sovereignty, His lordship. The, the right that he has as the highest being to rule the world as he intended it to be. This is ignored. We don't give God the right to be God into this world. But I have good news for you. If you follow Jesus Christ, you are on the winner's side. And God will reveal himself. And we see glimpse of that in the book of Revelation. He is majestic. He is glorious, he is in control, and he is the authority, and he is going to display it in all of the glory and the majesty and honor that is due to him. Amen? Yeah. That is what we, we read here. And then closing, going back to Revelation 9, 20 and 21, says the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent. And this is an amazing statement that it did not. 
that after five months of torment and an army of uh, 200 millions that have been you know, killing a third of the mankind, then they are not uh, on their knees in repentance. This is amazing. And it reveals the wickedness, the hardness of the sinfulness of man in the midst of God's judgments. And the most frightening things and this text is not God's judgment. The most frightening thing is, is the, the, the fact that God sends his judgments and men choose to persist in their sin and to ignore the warnings of God and to turn to God at this last moment says, God, you are right. I was wrong. You are God. Save me. And they are not doing that. They are not repenting. They are not turning away from their sin. They are choose to persist in their sin. This is the story of humanity that you are reading. And they sh should not worship demons and idols, but instead you see them persisting in sins, just business as you Sin is the way to go. My sin is my way. This is my way of life, okay? And then you see idolatry, you see drugs, sexual immorality, and all of these things we see it in our society uh, today. And it is amazing to see how quickly things return to normal. Every time the judgment of God comes and then pull away or there's a time of not judgment, like you are not affected at this moment because many of these judgments will be uh, geographical. So the rest of the other nations, the other countries, of course we will all see it on TV uh, the same day. You remember when the, the tsunami came in Japan? You were watching it live on TV. It's not, not uh, two hours or the next day or the evening news. You were seeing it right live when it was coming. And everything that will happen and at this time in Revelation, I suppose, will be even more advanced than what it is at the moment. Hallelujah. These people continue to reject God, the true God, and to worship uh, Satan. But God is working out his plan, and neither the sins of mankind nor the schemes of Satan will hinder him from ac accomplishing his will. And I want to finish with Psalm 2 that I was reading in my devotion this week and I was so, so shocked to, to read that, to, to realize the prophetic uh, ability of the King David. You read Psalm 2 and you think that he was right there in, the, in heaven at the time of these plagues and that he was describing the nations and that he was describing God. It's like he was s telling the story of what is happening a, a, few, a few thousand years before. Because you see, King David is like six, seven hundred years before Christ. And then after that, you have two thousand years. And then after that, you have a glimpse and eternity and the, and the revelation. So King David is already in that time prophetically describing the, the, the circle of the relationship between God and man. And in Psalm 2, he presents this uh, picture of the nation of the earth with their agendas and their ambitions. And they want to overcome God. They just don't want God. And they want to rule and they don't want God. Verse 1 and 2. Why are the nations so angry? Why do they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepare for battle, and you see that exactly in the book of Revelation. The rulers plot together against the Lord and against his anointed one. They raise their fists, they blaspheme, they curse God, they contradict and they claim that they have the truth. There is no God. They teach it in universities, they proclaim it in books, on TVs, everyone. And shame on those who do not go along with them. It says, yes, 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 that's right, that's right. There's no God, I believe, just like you. If you stand with your faith, you will be ridiculed. If you stand with your faith, you will be, you know, like, looked at, like, what, are you so stupid? You live in 2013, like, uh, nobody believes in God anymore. I have some good news for you. God exists. And he is the one who triumphs at the end. But these people claim that they are, but, and then at the other side, you know, you have the nations who show their fists and everything, and then you see in verse 4, but the one who rules in heaven laughs. He laughs to see these nations trying to 
come over him. The Lord scoffs at them. God is in control no matter how cleverly man plots against him. God will not, God will not change. God will not and cannot lose his control over this world. He has an agenda, he has a calendar, and it is going to happen. He will do to, according to his good pleasure. You know, in Psalm 2, verse 10 and 12, there is something here. Now then, you kings, act wisely. Be warned. You know, they have, the people of the world have been warned. I've been warned over and over again. Serve the Lord with reverent fear. Submit to God's royal son, and he will, or he will become angry. And pay attention to that one. And you will be destroyed in the midst of all of your activities. Okay? There are a choice here. You can be <coughs> destroyed in the midst of your activities, or you read, in Joshua chapter 1 verse 7 or uh, James chapter 1 verse 25 that you can be blessed in all of your activities. You can be destroyed in your activities or you can be blessed in your activities. And that is the lesson that Revelation is warning us. It says here, be warned, you rulers of the earth. Be warned, you business people. Be warned, you married people. Be warned, you students. Be warned, you uh, human beings of any uh, kind, rich or poor, or whatever nation you are. Be warned. Here is a choice. You can be blessed in all of your activities and have success, or you can be destroyed in your activities. Your activities can lead you to destructions or can it lead you to, the to enjoy the blessing of God. I choose the blessing of God. I have chosen that more than 30 years ago. I have not regretted it. And when I read the book of Revelation, I feel the, pro the presence of God. And I feel that I have made the right choice. And I have peace and I feel secure. And I know that it is worth it to continue on this way. In the beginning of 2014, I want to renew my commitment to God. And I want to realign my year's goal, my resolutions, my determinations and my decisions in accord to what I read here to please the Lord. Because there's no way that you can live and be successful if you are not pleasing the Lord and your goals and everything that you do. So this, I want to invite you to, to do this. God will do his good pleasure. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Imagine, at the end of the day, think, the end of the road. This is all that matters. God will do what pleases him. God will do it. God will judge it. God will reward it. God will say, well done. Or he will say, away from me. Because of what you have chosen and to your life. So me, I choose to align and realign 2014 with God's, uh, what pleases him in, this, in, in, my, in my way of life. Ease and control. If you and your business and your work and your relationships, you want to have significance. If you want to pass out, pass on a, a legacy that will last and that will bless other people, what are you going to choose for this year? What are you going to choose? If you want to leave a legacy, get in line. Get in line with what pleases the Lord. That's the only one way to go uh, this year. God is in control. We can align our goals and our resolution in 2014 with what blesses the Lord or fail. That's the choice that we have. So why this message this morning? To urge you to seek the promises of God. To those who read aloud, hear it, read it, and keep it. The Word of God. There are many reading plans. The Word of God is alive, is living. It will sustain. It will give substance to your faith. It will renew. It get you excited for God. And at the beginning of this year, are you going to continue business as usual, practice as usual, or realign your goals? 
realign your motives, realign your practices according to what pleases the Lord, and prioritize the Lord in everything that you do. Amen? Amen. Let us stand. Hallelujah.